There is something that I can almost guarantee you're consuming that is putting a huge damper on your longevity. And I'm not just trying to scare you, I'm going to give you a solid solution. What I'm talking about today is something that isn't discussed a whole lot because, I don't know, it's so simple, but it's just not discussed. Okay? They're called advanced glycation in products. And I think they get thrown under the bus sometimes as just, just like hippy-dippy thing that, oh, this isn't really going to affect me. But the reality is, this is everything. Now, what the heck is an advanced glycation in product? All right, an advanced glycation in product is simply where your body has proteins and fats that react with sugar to form sort of a caramelization, like a consolidation and a condensing of proteins and fats so that your body can't use them right. If you've ever caramelized an onion or you've ever browned a steak, then you know what I'm talking about. That browning of a steak where it turns brown and it kind of gets crispy and crunchy and crusty. Well, guess what? That happens inside your body to your cells. And guess what? Your fats and your protein can't really be used if they're like that. So, okay, well, what do we do? Do we just stop eating altogether? Okay, well, I will tell you in this video, you're going to hate me for a little while, but I promise that if you watch through the entire video, then you're gonna get some solutions and you're not gonna hate me anymore. So there's three ways that advanced glycation in products are really, really dangerous, okay? And I'll talk about how you get them in your body too in just a second, okay? First off, when you have advanced glycation in products, it triggers what's called the cross-linking of your collagen proteins. Okay, so I want you to envision this. You've got collagen proteins that are set up in like a crosshatch weave, okay, to form the structure of muscles, the structure of bones, the structure of your blood vessels. But now, all of a sudden, they get acted upon by sugar, and they caramelize, and they condense, and they crisp. Well, guess what? They just lost their dexterity. They're now rigid. What happens when your blood vessels are rigid? Well, they don't have flexibility, so they can't expand and contract as much. So they end up getting clogged. They end up causing some issues, right? Well, this happens not just in our blood vessels. It happens throughout our entire body when we cause this cross-linking of our collagen. It's a serious problem. Okay, now let's talk LDL for a second. Everyone's so quick to judge low-density lipoproteins. They, they get a blood test and their LDL's high and they think they're, it's the end of the world. That's not the case. The LDL's not the issue. When LDL gets oxidized or when LDL gets acted upon by sugar, that's when we have a serious problem. Okay, think of it like this. All right, your LDL is like Anakin Skywalker from Star Wars. Okay, it's innocently floating around doing its job. It's transporting cholesterol, it's transporting triglycerides. It has a healthy job within your body. But when Anakin Skywalker is exposed to the dark side for too long, he turns into Darth Vader. Well, guess what? That is like a perfect analogy because LDL, when exposed to sugar, becomes oxidized and becomes glycated, advanced glycation in products. Okay? You have the glycation of LDL which therefore makes it rigid and makes it so it can cause atherosclerosis. That is when LDL becomes a problem, when it reacts with sugar. Then we have something really fun. We have advanced glycation in product receptors on our cells. Because this is a real thing and because our bodies are designed to be able to withstand a certain amount of them, we're built with receptors to handle them. So on our cells, we have these little receptors and they're appropriately named receptor advanced glycation end product, acronym being RAGE. Kind of funny, right? So here's what happens. When we have this sugar that comes in that triggers advanced glycation end products and triggers the caramelization, once again, of proteins and lipids, well, when they react with our cells, the cell receptor for advanced glycation end products triggers an oxidative damage response. Basically, you have a bunch of oxidative stress that occurs because the body now has to neutralize this AGE. Okay, well, additionally, there's more to it than just that sort of a chain reaction that happens is the instigation of nuclear factor kappa B, which is sort of the general when it comes down to inflammation. So now that you've activated nuclear factor kappa B, you have a cascade of inflammation that's occurring throughout the rest of your body. Inflammation, bad. Inflammation, root of just about every disease state. Okay, we may be finding a pretty solid link here. Okay, so where are you getting advanced glycation in products? Like, where are these coming in? Well, let's talk about that.
Hey, I do wanna take a second, make sure you hit that red subscribe button and then do hit that bell icon. And we've got new videos coming out just about every single day and you're gonna learn something new that's gonna change your life. After you watch this video, I do wanna make sure you check out Thrive Market down below in the description. I've been able to create really good quality grocery boxes. Thrive Market's an online membership-based grocery store, so you can get like my keto box, my fasting box, things like that. So anyway, if you're just on a healthy path, if you're on a healthy journey, you'd be foolish not to check them out. You gotta check them out because it's cheaper than the grocery store and you get stuff delivered right to your doorstep. I'm a huge fan of them. They're a big sponsor of this channel. So check them out in the link down below after you finish watching this video. Okay, so where are we getting these things? Well, we have two different kinds. We have endogenous advanced glycation end products and we have exogenous, okay? So endogenous means these are advanced glycation end products that are created inside your body. Simple example is this, you eat a bagel and this bagel gets broken down into carbohydrates that are in its glucose form. Okay, well, that sugar that came from that bagel eventually goes around and oxidizes LDL and oxidizes other things and, of course, you know, triggers glycation. Okay, that's one way. Then there's another way, and this is the way that we actually end up with the most damage. Exogenous advanced glycation end products come from cooking things too much. Okay, yeah. So the scary thing is, is like even the ketogenic diet, like if you're doing keto, there's a chance that you're consuming a ton of advanced glycation end products, which is where a lot of some of these anti-keto crowds have so much of their ammunition. But there's some ways that we can fix it, so I'm gonna explain it first. Just like I explained the caramelization effect of proteins and lipids inside your body, this is happening with like your foods too, right? So if you take a steak and you pan sear it, you're gonna brown it, and that's gonna trigger advanced glycation end products right then and there. And then you consume them, and guess what? You're just loading your body with a bunch of them. Perfect example here. That same pan-seared steak, 100 grams of it, has 9,000 kilounits of advanced glycation end products, whereas 100 grams of a bagel only has 100 kilounits. So that might make the argument, hey, maybe you should just not do keto, and maybe you should just eat a bagel. Well, except for the fact that if you are consistently consuming sugar, then, or consistently consuming carbohydrates, then you have a constant load of these advanced glycation end products in your body. So that is not good. You should reduce the sugar, you should reduce the carbohydrates. So how do we reduce the AGEs that are coming in from like the pan seared meats? Because if you're doing keto, or you're doing a low carb diet, then I'm afraid that you're probably consuming a lot of these AGEs. And I don't want you to potentially make yourself at risk for cardiovascular disease because you're trying to make a healthy choice. So here's a few things. Number one, low temperature cooking, and high moisture cooking, okay? So that's gonna be really important. That literally means cooking in the microwave can actually be really good. Okay, there's very little radiation in the microwave, less than an FM radio, so don't even worry about that. I've done videos on that topic, okay? But also, um, crock pot, okay? Pressure cooker, things like that. Cook your meats that way, and trust me, you will have significantly less. Okay, then number two is gonna be marinating in acid. This is so simple. There's a study that was published in the Journal of the American Dietetic Association that found that, yeah, just marinating in acid, or like lemon or vinegar or anything like that, cut advanced glycation in products by 50%. So you could actually still go through with your whole browning and cooking at a moderately high temperature like on the grill and stuff like that, if you just marinate in like a little bit of salad dressing that has some vinegar. It's pretty wild, so just don't just do a dry rub. Okay, marinate it a little bit and it will make a huge difference. It makes it so that it stops that Maillard reaction that triggers the browning which causes the advanced glycation in products. Problem solved, really simple. And last but not least, according to critical reviews in food science and nutrition, if you cook with a little bit of black pepper and turmeric, you also reduce significantly the amount of advanced glycation end products that are a result of cooking. So you can fix these things easily. It's not like you're just totally out of luck, right? I just, we need to educate ourselves. We need to understand what we are putting in our bodies. And I know it seems like every video that I put out, I'm telling you one other thing that you should be afraid of, but my goal here is to just arm you with so much knowledge that you just have this repository of information. So every time you go to cook something, every time you go to eat something, every time you cook something for your family, you're making a decision that's gonna allow you to be on this earth for a longer period of time. So as always, make sure that you're keeping it locked in here on my channel. We got videos coming out just about every single day that are going to help pave the way for you. We're not just about keto. We're not just about intermittent fasting. We're about metabolic flexibility so that your body can utilize what you are feeding it to absolutely make you the best version of yourself. So every single day at 6 or 7 a.m. Pacific time, you're going to see a brand new video. So make sure you hit that red subscribe button and turn on that little bell. As always, I'll see you soon. Five very clean cut ways to not just get collagen into your body, 
but to improve the bioavailability of collagen in your body so it can be utilized. Bone broth. Because you're taking the amino acids that you need from collagen and you're literally taking those bones and tendons and you're cooking them down, you're getting all of the collagen types 1, types 2, and types 3 that you need to have complete collagens within the body. So what's interesting is that the baseline aminos that we need are proline, glycine, and arginine. Now within those aminos, they get bound to all kinds of different aminos in our body. The point is, is that once you have these bare bone basics of collagen, then your body can add whatever other amino acids it needs to to create specific collagens. What am I rambling on about here? The simple point.